I, how you doing, Michael? Good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Today's, so, um, today's youth pastor day on the on the Randos channel. I just got talking to finish talking to a youth pastor. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I yeah, put that in my little blurb. I, I don't know. I was like, what do I put in this? I don't know. But um, you know, I, I was I wouldn't. You'd been saying that um, people were complaining about how hard it was to get a spot with you, and so I was like, well, I'll try, and you know, maybe it's going to take a long time. And I kind of thought this will be like motivation to. Uh, you know, try to start a channel or and something. And then it happened a lot sooner than I was expecting. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's good. And, and, you know, so yeah, I've been thinking about, you know, what I want to talk to you about for the past week. And, um, um, you know, I thought I do have a kind of a story. Um, actually, you know, I have a lot of similar history to you and, you know, some of what I've been hearing about your, um, background and stuff. And so, um, um, but I'm, you know, firmly embedded in church world and speak fluent Christianese and, <laughs> you know, but, you know, I, I love just listening all, all kinds of different stuff. And uh, I actually came up on your channel by I was searching for um, Jordan Peterson and Francis Schaefer. Uh, and, and, I, and I found your um, video with Burn Powers. Yeah, yeah. And he, he had a lot less videos on his channel. So I, I watched all his videos first. Wow. Um, but, <laughs> they're long, they're long though. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so uh, right now, so I'm, I'm a carpenter. I work full time doing that and I get to listen to stuff about eight or nine hours a day. So yeah. Yeah. I can consume a lot of content. And for some reason, my wife is just like, not as interested in talking about it all when I get really, home. I never <laughs> hear that. <laughs> Yeah. My wife watches zero of my videos. Yeah. <laughs> Someone would say, do you watch your husband's videos? She's more like, why would I do that? <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, that, that was, uh, you know, uh, I, you know, cause I've, I've been watching Jordan Peterson kind of late to the game, but you know, s more since his kind of a uh, second wave here, um, you know, I, I'd, I'd heard about him before. Um, but, uh, you know, you know, and um, something it brought to mind. Um, oh, actually, what it was was, um, you know, my kind of uh, way to providentially find different things to read is just whatever is free in the uh, library app. And one of uh, the uh, Francis Schaefer books I found in there, the um, How Should We Then Live? And, yeah. and I remember I'd, I'd actually seen that video series when I was a teenager. And so then I watched it again. I was like, wow, this is really good. And I realized, you know, I bought a couple of his books and I was reading them. And, you know, he he kind of touches on a lot of the same philosophers that Peterson deals with. And it's like, man, why can't Jordan Peterson just talk to, you know, some evangelical of, of some stripe and, you know, it might make a little bit more progress towards, uh, you know, what, what, what I guess most of us are kind of hoping for, for him to uh, connect the dots a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I found I found your channel. I've been watching it and uh, really enjoying it. Um, good, good. And uh, um, you know, one of the things I've, uh, since since seeing your commentary, I'd been putting it off, and I finally started listening to the uh, the Mars Hill podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, and I kind of wanted to be like ah, this. Just seems like it's you know, I, you know, I don't like watching things that I think are just trashing the church or, or Christianity, yeah. but. Yeah you know, it's, it's, it's out there and it's popular. And so I figured I should, you know, uh, be aware of it. And so, you know, uh, m my story kind of, it made me think about my own story a lot. And so I thought, you know, I, could, I had some background that I could share and, and that um, maybe I could be a voice that, you know, is coming from a different direction than, you know, a lot of what, what they're putting forward. Uh, so, you know, just kind of start from the beginning. I, you know, I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, both my parents were first generation Christians. They got saved, you know, in co around college, or I think my mom would, might have got saved in high school. But um, like, you know, they had a, my dad had a, has a pretty crazy testimony. Um, he was uh, he was watching The Exorcist, and he said, "I think I'm being oppressed by demons." And uh, he was, he grew up Catholic, um, but, you know, he is so he, he went to a Catholic priest and confession or whatever. And, and, you know, he was kind of hoping, 
the priest would say, oh, don't worry about that stuff. And he was telling me, he said, well, you know, that stuff is, that stuff's real. And he's like, oh boy, what am I going to do? <laughs> and um, he had a friend who I guess, you know, had been trying to uh, share the gospel with him or something. And, and, and he ended up in this like Christian real estate office and uh, he got saved. And then somebody else just kind of shared some scripture with him and he got delivered. And so um that, that was his story so you know it, not the the um presence of like weird stuff has always been there a little bit in my in my growing up and so he, he and my mom they had gotten involved at a uh, a college fellowship um uh, and they actually oh yeah so they had a a seminar a seminary student this is in massachusetts so um and I know you said your, your mother's from there. Yeah, yeah, I'm in Massachusetts fairly regularly. So, okay, so they were at Framingham State College, oh, okay. and there was a seminary student who came down to help them with their uh, their Christian fellowship uh, from Gordon Conwell Seminary, yep. Yep. and his name was Tim Keller. <laughs> So I didn't, I didn't find that out until later on, you know, I, you know, said, mom, I told my mom, I read this great book and this guy, and she said, oh yeah, we know Tim Keller. And she pulls out these books and there's all these personalized. So yeah, <laughs> they had known him <laughs> since college and he had helped them uh, kind of set up their thing. So, uh, you know, I guess, you know, the really great thing is that my, you know, I was saturated in, in Christianity, but I didn't have the, you know, sometimes I, you know, hear from people that grew up in really like fundamentalist backgrounds you know the the parents are fearful of the world and you know the teaching was very rigid and i didn't i never felt that sense of like that there was anything to be afraid of there was no question that was you know we you know had to fear i mean my my dad um he's a science teacher, um, for pretty much his whole life. So, you know, the, the, you know, there was no, like this divide between church and science and all that things, you know, there's always, a, there's always a different perspective, a different way to look at things. You know, if something seems like it contradicts, we just search a little bit more and, you know, we'll figure out some kind of a solution. Um, so that was, that was the environment I grew up in. And, um, when I was about 10 or so, my dad uh, kind of um, became the uh, interim pastor at our church uh, when the pastor left because he was kind of the most experienced person. And he, uh, so he, started, he was an interim pastor and then that lasted for about 25 years. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I have a little bit of the, the PK experience, um, but it was a very small church. Um, you know, maybe it was like 35 people if everybody yeah. actually showed up on a yeah. Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, I watched one of your uh, Sunday morning videos and I saw you, you guys are doing like the prayer requests in the middle of service. Yeah, like, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. That's just like my dad's church, you yeah, know? So. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can easily do it. There's not that many yeah. people out there. Yeah. And most of them don't have one. If you have 100 people, it, yeah. it gets tougher. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, you know, so that, that was, you know, that was the kind of the environment I grew up in. And then when I got to about high school, uh, you know, my parent, you know, tiny church like that, they didn't have a lot of separate things for the youth and stuff like that. So I ended up going to, to a, a youth group at uh, Assemblies of God Church down the street. And, um, you know, that was, a, it was a much bigger church for, uh, you know, uh, it was in uh, Menden, Massachusetts. Yep. Yeah, that's that's so, the, yeah. Because I know you're in Whitensville. Very close to Whitensville. Yeah, yep. yeah. So, um, and it was pretty big, pretty big church for the area. Probably about three, four hundred people, something like that. And uh, they were very involved in stuff. Like when I went there in high school, the youth group was also like a a. They had like a separate building. It was like in a strip mall downtown, and it was like a concert venue. And so there was all these like punk bands and stuff and i started getting involved in, in like playing uh in in some of these bands and things like that and made you know the, the pastor's son became one of my best friends and um so i kind of got really involved in the in the world there and um you know they had uh uh 
after high school, I uh, went to, um, you know, found out about through that, like a discipleship program at a, a big Assemblies of God church in Illinois. So it was like a 5,000 person mega church. And then um, came, came back and did, did some other things. I went to a local Bible college for a little while. And then I ended up uh, working in another church in, in San Diego, I had signed kind of a similar program because like that was like one I wanted to do was be involved in like the ministry training kind of stuff. And, and then uh, around the uh, 2008 financial collapse, the church there shut that down. So I ended up back home and, and I started working at um, the Assemblies of God Church um, near where I grew up. And, you know, I worked there for a long time um, and they were, they were like, they're really great people. The people there love God and they cared so much about the community and um, the whole, their whole family was very involved. The pastor, the pastor's wife, his children, uh, and they had a very like entrepreneurial kind of vision for things. So they found a lot of ways to uh, make inroads in the community and also help people out. So for a while there, um, the uh, the pastor's wife was a real estate agent. She found a bunch of, she was really great at finding like cheap buildings and stuff like that. And, you know, so they, they would, they would provide, they provided me with housing, myself and quite a few other people. And, you know, uh, and that way they didn't have to provide as much salary, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, for 21, 22 year old people that are, you know, wanting to, serve God and do good things. It was a great, you know, situation. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I was there for many years. Um, and you know, they had, they, I got a lot involved with a lot of stuff, you know, they had, they, they built a couple, uh, you know, they opened a couple of thrift stores and I, so I worked there part-time. They had a Christian school. I taught at the school. Um, I, uh, ended up doing a lot of carpentry and things like that. So, you know, that's what I do now. Um, but like, they they did stuff like that you would expect for a church of like 2000 people but much smaller and um you know the 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 uh the you know the thing is what i want to say is like well, well so eventually um uh worked there a long time um my wife started working there we met we were friends for a long time got married um and then uh, we got the opportunity when the youth group kind of started expanding, we split it into uh, senior high, junior high. So we got to take over my wife and I, the, the junior high youth group. And for me, that was like a really big deal, you know, like not um, just because I felt like it was a real confirmation of my calling, you know, that I was, you know, whereas before I was getting paid to do things you know, actual jobs and then volunteering a lot of my time to do ministry things. Like now I was, you know, it wasn't a lot of money, but symbolically to get paid for doing the ministry. And, yeah. and, you know, that was very meaningful to me. And, um, and, you know, so I've, um, I really appreciated that a lot. And, uh, you know, you know, I'm going to say it was a, it was a great thing. I learned a lot from the, the experience, but, um, you know, over time it just became, you know, the, the pace that everything was going at. Um, and really, you know, I guess some of the, the dynamics of like a, a family run church, um, it, you know, I began to feel very alienated from mm. some of the people that I was working with. And, and, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of rest opportunities. There wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, provision for people's own spiritual growth. And, you know, I didn't have a, a mentor, you know, and I didn't have uh, you know, a group that I could just be a part of anything, you know, even if we, if we ended up going to uh, an adult small group of some time, somehow we would end up <laughs> becoming the leaders <laughs> at some point, you know, and, um, you know, it was, it was really, uh, it was really tough, you know, cause like the, the pastor's son, you know, he's one of my best friends, but he, now he was my boss. He was in charge of the youth ministry. He was mm -hmm. in church, in charge of the worship and, yeah. you know, 
you can't it's it's tough in that situation to to um who do you vent to about your work yeah. problems when you're you know your work and your church and everything is all jumbled up yeah so and, the pastor's son had become the pastor of the church that he grew up in you know he was the youth he was the youth he was in charge of the youth group okay. so and so, so he was in charge of more or less of the the high school and as an umbrella over you yeah. know we were in charge of the junior high but you know we reported to him yeah. um and you know you know now now that i can look back and it's like uh, you know they they are amazing people and god gave that family amazing gifts yeah but they were not easy people to work alongside and uh -huh. you know there was many people that came and go as far as staff and yeah. um and you know it's not like they were doing anything for personal gain like yeah. they like every single one of them there they were putting in crazy hours and late nights and you know anytime yeah. it was easter or christmas it was yeah. you know you're going to be working past midnight doing this and yeah. that and and you know they weren't gain it's not like they were you know driving lamborghinis or anything yeah. like that yeah. everything that they they had they were benefiting what of off of it they put back into the church yeah yeah, yeah. uh but it just made it, you know, it made it hard um, to, you know, it, my, my, my personal relationship with God had very suffered greatly, you know, by the end of our time there. And, uh, you know, about a year before we ended up leaving, you know, we kind of, my wife and I prayed about it and we said, well, I think we should, you know, stay here for a, another year um, and see if, you know, things change or you know if the situation doesn't change then you know if we feel like it's okay for us to go and kind of the um the impetus for the change was that my parents had decided to retire and they were going to move to texas and that's where i am now and uh you know that's you know we stuck it out there for a while and and you know i was i'm glad to say you know there really wasn't any hard feelings mm -hmm. before we left but like it was close <laughs> you know <laughs> and i mean um and and you know and so you know kind of reflecting like on the uh the the, the mars hill thing and and you know mm -hmm. just like you know so selective in the people that they interview to talk about these things and these, these situations um you know like I, and and really what i realized is you know, I, I have, I have some wounds from that experience, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, it took some time. Um, we've been here now in, in Texas for about three years and it took a yeah. little while for those wounds to heal, but, you know, there was a lot of other people who didn't stick it out the same way. And, yeah. you know, and their, their, the way that they left was not good. And, you know, as many, as much as, as much as wounds that I, you know, I feel like, you know, I wasn't able to thrive in that circumstance, like it's tough being a pastor. And so I know you must, you know, you've experienced wounds, I'm sure as a pastor, you know, um, and, you know, so I just, you know, but I don't know where in the Bible it ever says, you know, that working in the church or being part of a church or even as a member is going to be a pain free, yeah. you know, experience. Yeah, um, certainly wasn't that case for Paul, the apostle. Yeah. You know, and so so, you know, being able to look back and say, like, you know, yeah, I have some wounds and stuff, but it's like, I don't want to trade those wounds for like that's, you know, we you know, we serve a wounded God. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah and yeah. like, that's the cost of loving people. And so, you know, it's like saying as much as I know, like I was hurt by the experience, like, you know, I know some of the, some, you know, my, my friend there, he was tough to love. He, because he, he, he had a very hard time being vulnerable with people. Sometimes, yeah. you know, you know, I, I, you know, I, and so, you know, it's tough for me being like, he can't always be the best friend that I need, but I know what he's going through. I, I, I don't want to, hurt him i want to be a good friend for him because you know pastors don't get to have a lot of friends you know yeah it's in, very true. In, in large 
And so, you know, that was just kind of my thought, my thinking, you know, like, man, with this, this thing, like, not to say like Mark Driscoll's a very complicated character and, uh, and, you know, like the, the episode where he talked about, you know, where he kind of fired that staff member yeah. and, you know, that was like, well, I don't think that was done the right way, but, you know, some of the other stuff, like it just, you know, it kind of makes me feel like the, the world or maybe just Christianity today or whatever, you know, wants, we're going to be in big trouble if, if pastors are afraid of ever saying anything that might offend the people in their congregation, because how else are they going to, you know, cause growth, you know, like, like they, like, I, and I mean, like Mark, Mark Driscoll was an, you know, he was a, an intense guy and, and kind of like, you know, over the top, but I mean, you know, like the stuff that, you know, you know, like you kind of said, he was kind of like a proto Jordan Peterson, you know, he was getting at men and men yeah. have been missing from church. Yeah. And, you know, if he said stuff that was too shocking and too extreme, well, that's on the heels of like, you know, however many decades of pastors being way too timid and talking about yeah. sex and, and things like that. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I get that same feeling often when I listen to the podcast, I listened to Justin Brierly recently on the unbelievable news feed released the, a recording of his interview with Mark Driscoll. And that, that was, a, I found that to be a very interesting interview because on one hand, there were, there were clearly signs of problems with Driscoll in terms of being too quickly defensive, um, combative, yet also a lot of the ways that Driscoll said things, I thought that I couldn't imagine saying things better than that. And you're exactly right. If pastors get too afraid of, of, of people being offended, well, then the pastoral ministry loses something. And, you know, it's funny because let's say on the other side of the aisle, people like, well, I'm just being prophetic and we're, we're going to have tough conversations and, oh, okay. But when all of those things are things I agree with, then they're okay. And when they're things I don't agree with, then suddenly they're out of bounds. So no, that's, that's, you know, you're very right. Are you, are you active in, in church now in Texas? Yeah, I am. So, and, and, and when I came here, you know, like, I love the church, you know, and, um, and my, and my, you know, my whole thing coming down was more or less, I just like, I want to find a church. I want to get involved. I want to volunteer. I do not want to work there. I want to have a separate employer <laughs> from my church. Yeah, uh, there's that's, and that's a big point too, you know, as someone who It is, it is not, it is not ideal, generally speaking, for your spiritual life to work, to have your church be your employer. That is a, that is a very common thing. And, and things go bad lots of different ways. And, you know, I know it's not uncommon, especially in the assemblies of God, to have churches sort of become family businesses. And there's danger in that too. Hmm. Um, it, that doesn't happen in the Christian Reformed Church as much, just because of our ecclesiology. But um, you're right in that. Well, in family businesses, people work crazy long hours. Not just family churches, family businesses, yeah. because that's that's sort of the nature of the thing. And um, and then you've got. I worked for in, when I was in college growing up. I worked for a family business, uh, Cuke and Lumber in New Jersey, and you know, Kenny went to school with me at Eastern Christian and the Kukins were all part of the CRC and my father had a connection. And so he, he actually found me the job. My father would often find me jobs because he was so well connected, but you know, it was a family business. And so Kenny's uncles and father and, you know, grandfather and great uncles all worked in that business. And there's just dynamics then in the organization, because it's a family and it's a business. And especially now it's a, with a church then it's also a ministry and that stuff gets complicated fast. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that's what, you know, when we moved down here and I told my wife, I'm like, I do not want to work for a church and I don't want you to either. And um, <laughs> well, that didn't actually work out exactly the way I was planning. Um, so so we, we found a great church um, and um, the pastor is, he's very humble. You know, he's only a few years older than, than, than we are. Um, but uh, you know, I, you know, I've never heard a pastor apologize more for his shortcomings, you know, from the, the stage. And, yeah. you know, I was like, wow, that's, that's kind of, I mean, I think that's a, a scary thing a lot of times for people in ministry because, yeah. you know, even, even in, in uh, you know, evangelical churches that don't have the formal structure, like, you know, the Orthodox or whatever, you know, you, you do as a pastor become a, a spiritual authority and your life is looked at as this, you know, more than human thing. Um, and so, you know, it, so they, they, um, they needed a children's ministry director and my wife was begging me and begging me and I'm like, okay, fine, you can work. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, they sucked me back in. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, and I have to say that really the staff has been very supportive. They've taken really great care of her. She's paid well for the amount of hours that she works. Um, but now she's just, she's kind of now she, she's saying like, I, now I understand why you said what you did just because she's having the frustration of like, can't get anybody to volunteer so you know we we haven't actually gotten to sit together in a service in like three months or whatever yeah, yeah you know and yeah i was like well i was just trying to tell you but yeah i mean yeah 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 pretty common but, pretty yeah. common i mean but you know i i i i think she understands you know this is sort of like you know what, what we're called to or, or whatever you know like yeah um so now you know i'm free from formal um you know attachments or whatever and i just kind of uh you know kind of oh, let's see I, I i i don't know it was a couple of years ago i kind of had this just you know in, coming from the standpoint of where i grew up and the way that my parents kind of raised me in christianity and in such a an open way and you know like when i took that big five thing like my openness is like all the way up <laughs> but uh so you know i'm really not you know but like but in in when i answer all those questions i'm thinking of like you know i'm not negotiating that i believe god is real or the bible is true but holding on to that i'm open to anything you know as far as ideas and things like that but like my introversion is all i'm also totally introverted um, oh, that's interesting. High in yeah. openness and introversion. Yeah. So, you know, I'm kind of always battling this thing of like, you know, should I say anything? Like, I don't know. And like, you know, I've kind of had the experience of being in meetings and the people that want to talk will talk. And then I will be like, what you're saying is really dumb. But then <laughs> they keep talking for so long that I'm just like, I just want to get out of here. I'm not going to say anything. So, <laughs> Um, you know, so, but I kind of, the, the question that, you know, kind of led me down kind of, you know, researching all these things and looking into stuff and Jordan Peterson and all this stuff is, is like, to me, it's as a Christian, like Christianity has the answers, but like people don't want it, you know, and, and you know, like why? And, you know, I guess in a lot of ways, people don't in the world at large or whatever society they don't see the the problems that christianity has the answers to um uh you know so that's kind of you know that's just kind of a thing that, that that's you know took me down a rabbit hole and um you know and then when kind of all this covid stuff hit you know and everybody's reaction to everything was like so weird and then it really became apparent like how like polarized everything is and uh you know like people in the church would act one certain weird way and everything on like the news and social media was another weird way and you know there's like no conversation about anything and you know so um then i kind of figured well 
you know, I can just start like writing stuff and, you know, I, I just get so frustrated listening to the same like bad two sides of every argument. Uh, and, and then, you know, so I started writing things about a year ago and, and then, oh. then I figured, you know, kind of part, you know, Jordan Peterson talks about, you know, like YouTube is kind of like, eh, it's this new future thing. And like, you know, you don't have to have specific qualifications. Anybody can get up there and say anything. And I thought, well, this is you, true. Know, you know, you know, as, a, as an inner, as an introverted person, you know, every t- like I've, I've, I kind of, since we had this meeting, I got together, I put two videos out really real quick. Yeah. Well, you know, one was just kind of like what I wanted to talk about. And the other one was just a me more or less reading an essay that I had written. Um, and I'm like, you know, there's just this voice saying like, this is stupid. Why am I doing this? Who's going to watch this? I don't know. But then I it's have like, that same voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I figured, you know, what, you should you know, put put the put the link in the in the chat right now, and I'll make sure I include it in the if we if we publish it in the in the show notes. Okay. So. Well, I don't know if I can figure out how to do that, but I'm oh, doing okay. this on my phone. So. All right. Well, just send me an email. Just send okay. me an email. Okay. Yeah. Um. But um. You know. So. Yeah. I guess that's more or less. You know. I get really frustrated by listening to people argue the same points over again and and uh, not have any creative you know new solutions and um you know it, it was actually that jordan peterson video that just came out where he was talking to those two uh yeah theologians Rocks. or whatever you know yeah yeah and the one guy was talking about kind of like you know that how the the university it's not the university anymore because you know the original idea was that you would learn about all these broad subjects and you know and all this was founded under the idea of christendom and and science even was you know god made a world so let's figure out how it works and and you know you would study these different things and then you would see the connections between them and so for me like that that's what i'm doing all the time you know and and like that's exciting to me and even like you know like you know, so I'm like, I do carpentry, like I do that all the time. And like, I'm always like learning things from like yeah. carpentry. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing, it, you know, in woodworking, there's like a, there's like a hundred solutions to every problem, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, and so if, if, if that's the case for woodworking, it's probably the case for a lot of other things too. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But uh, that's you know not not the way the discourse usually goes. Yeah. Um, you know, and so you know that's the thing. You know, everything's become so specialized and so narrow, and um, you know, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, I want to explore some of those interesting connections. And so, yeah, that's one of the things I really appreciate about your channel. You know, like, um, you know, I haven't gotten to read the the Dominion book yet, but you know, I, I think like that was kind of similar in that Francis Schaeffer video yeah. series kind of like yeah. went through history and showed yeah. like you know and it, it, you know when christianity was not afraid of engaging with culture and art and all these things some great things happened yeah you know it's kind of i don't know the temptation towards like behavior control kind of makes you know which you know i, I guess that's being an, an open person i you know i don't that's why I'm like, why? You know, that's scary for a lot of people, I guess. You know, like you don't want to let people just explore whatever. You know, we might come up with some crazy thing. They might not do the right stuff. They might, you know, society's going to run off the rails or whatever. Well, yeah. it's kind of already happening. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so I mean, I, I think, you know, I, I would just love to see, you know, some of the good intellectual conversation that's happening here on the fringes of people who are more, more out in the, you know, you know, it's good that some people are seeing the limitations of this kind of materialistic worldview. And they're like trying to move towards spirituality and Christianity. But I think, you know, there's also this giant like evangelical world that has a lot of this great stuff but they've you know maybe in the like seeker sensitive uh movement or or, you know they've 
they've downplayed so much of the intellectual richness that is really is really there in in Christianity and and you know uh, you know I understand like the um, the appeal that people are are drawn now towards like the Orthodox Church and stuff like that. Well, you got and, you the know, beard I mean, like, for it. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> you know it's it's really intriguing you know and i've listened to some of those um that like lord of spirits podcast there's like yeah. really great stuff on there and it's, it's like wow this is great you know I, like but i you know i kind of just like okay well let's take that and like bring it over to all these like hmm. 500 million churches that we have in america you know but i mean that's like i totally am protestant through and through in the way of like i just I don't know. I'm like, I'm like an eternal three-year-old. I just want to ask why, why, why to everything. And it seems like with the Orthodox church and the Catholic church, the answer is tradition a lot. And then that's where the conversation ends. So, you know, that's, so, I mean, as much as like, I would like to just go there and, and enjoy the, you know, the beauty and the, you know, all the, the tradition and all that stuff, I kind of just be like, well, we kind of have to move forward. I think, you know, we need to, we need to engage the questions that, uh, you know, the, the world at large is struggling with more. So. But Very true. That's you know. part of why I, I, that's, yeah, I, it, it's interesting the difference but the differences between you know the orthodox and the catholics and then the protestants and of course there's huge range within protestants i mean the protestant church is so diverse um and and you know you you very i mean you very well articulated sort of the the neo-evangelical vision and francis schaefer in many ways you know especially at his time sort of put his finger on it the interesting thing about schaefer was he he sort of became a darling of the sort of the um moral majority rise of a certain kind a certain segment of evangelicalism but he never really was that either though and that kind of you know then Frankie, you know, Frank Schaefer, that story turned out, you know, Frank Schaefer is now Orthodox, but kind of a, he's a, he's not like a lot of the Orthodox you find in the Peugeot world. He's mm -hmm. sort of a progressive, he's a progressive evangelical who goes to Orthodox churches. It's a really interesting video out there on YouTube of a conversation he did with Brian McLaren. And McLaren is, of course, one of the sort of the when when the emergent movement split into reformed and and progressive evangelicals, you know, McLaren is right there on the progressive side. So it's a it's a it's a complicated it's a complicated world out there. It really is. And well, I'm, I'm curious about, are, are you going to a, a non-denominational church? Are you going to another A of G? Where, where's your church journey sort of led you now? Um, well, so, you know, this is kind of interesting thing, like, and yeah, it's not, no, I mean, so the, my dad's church was a, a congregational, congregational church, and yep. he came out of a, uh, the church that, you know, he went, came up in uh, after college where it was like a Plymouth Brethren, yeah. but then it had like charismatic Catholics that had started going there and some like charismatic Lutherans. And so it's all like a hodgepodge of stuff. And local churches uh, can be very much that way. They're, they very, they got this, they got this label on them, but is that what you're yeah. going to find inside? You never know. And, you know, and so, and really like, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much a Calvinist at heart. Um, but like most of it, you know, and the, the Assemblies of God doesn't really have a specific like stance on yeah. that. But yeah. most of the ones I went to were pretty Arminian. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the whole time I was kind of like, well, I don't know if that's really, you know, <laughs> you know, so that, like my whole time in church, you know, I, there were certain points of the theology that I was like, I don't know about that, you know. And, and honestly, the, I kind of you know, I guess in being high in openness, I'm, you know, I'm sort of like, well, I've, I'm 85% this way, 
but I see that there's an argument here. So maybe I could be wrong. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, so the church that we are at now, uh, I guess they were planted out of uh, a church that made, I, I guess it was, it's probably like Baptist originally, but it's basically become non-denominational and, and they, we, they actually just left the, uh, the, 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 they were, it was part of like a missionary church USA, I think. And then they just left that denomination. So currently they're not affiliated with anybody, you know, How big but I mean, is that's the church? it. What? How big uh, is the church? Probably about 200 people. It's a little hard to say. Oh, okay. Know, so not real post- big post COVID. No, no. And that was like, yeah. So we, so we moved to uh, San Antonio and I was like, Oh my gosh, how are we going to pick a church? This is going to be horrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and, you know, when we went to a couple and, and uh, you know, like we went to one and they were like doing this whole, like at the movies thing. And I'm like, this is silly. And like, uh, you know, how, how do um, you and your wife do with this, with the, with the church shopping? Well, so we really this we only ended up like like trying like three churches oh, um, okay so we went to the we went to one that she liked but i was like nah this reminds me too much of our previous church um and then we went to the you know mega church with a lot of flash and not a lot of substance and not even like friendly people or whatever so that was kind of disappointing um and then she had like met somebody at Target who said, I don't go to church because I have to work on Sundays. But when I used to go to church, I went to this one ah. and she told her about it. And we just watched like, you know, after going to the bad church, we watched uh, the sermon online and we're like, wow, this is a lot better. So we went to this, you know, small church and, uh, you know, um, the pastor had a conversation with us. Like, you know, he sent us an email a few days later. He remembered everything about us and, yeah. you know, uh, you know, then him and his wife invited us out for coffee and, 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 uh, you know, so it was like, yeah, this is the right place for us. You know, it was just, it was just, you know, cause I don't like picking things. So, uh, you know, it was, it was very providential in the way that it happened that we didn't, you know, cause that, that was my, you know, going to a big city with lots of options and, you know, tons of churches. Uh, yeah. uh it really didn't take us too long to find the, the right place. And oh, you were fortunate. You know, yeah. But, you know, I mean, because, but I, you know, I don't like picking things, but, you know, I, I'm just the person, you know, I'm like, we're going to go to this one. We're going to commit all the way, you know, plant our roots, get involved, you know, which is like, I don't know, like, why doesn't everybody just do that? Everything would be perfect ah, ah, if, if everybody just. But not everybody's like you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> No, that's unusual. There are there are those people and they do come. And on the church side of things, sometimes it's really awesome when those people come because it's like, oh boy, this makes this makes this makes the pastor's job a lot easier. Sometimes they're not great because they stay, they come and say, okay, we're here, we're gonna commit. And it's like, okay. But then within oh within a few weeks, they hit a snag and it's like Oh, they were going to come and commit. And now you stupid church, you're not, you're not who we thought you were. They never phrase it that way. It's usually you're doing something wrong. Why don't you stop? Then, then the question is, okay, are they going to dig in and try and change everyone in the church? And churches are complex things because they're so full of people and, yeah. you know, people respond and react to things. And that's, that's, it's a live, it's a live situation. Always is. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I was, I was trying to remember. Yeah, so it was actually funny. Before we even went to there on a Sunday morning, my wife, and so my wife's an extreme extrovert, just so, you know, as opposites attract, you know, but <laughs> but uh, before before we even went on a Sunday morning, she said, I'm signing up for this men's Bible study. And I'm like, crap, I have to go there by myself. I'm like, so I hadn't even gone to the church yet and went to the Bible study. And it was only about five guys. So I was like, oh, okay, this isn't so bad. And, you know, that was, so that was nice to be able to like meet some people. And, you know, I've been going to that group faithfully ever since. And you know, but now since. you're an extreme introvert and you want to have a YouTube channel. Well, yeah, because I listened to nine hours of other people talking all the day. And, I, you know, it, it, it makes me, I have strong opinions about things. I just, you know, I don't, so, I mean, in that sense, I'm like, well, you know, if I, 
if I just put videos out there, I don't have to actually deal with the people, you know? Well, there's some, some, some truth to that until yeah. they start writing back. Well, how many subscribers do you want? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I mean, I mean, honestly, it's kind of, you know, before I kind of stumbled onto your, your channel, you know, I was just, you know, seeing whatever the, you know, the algorithm gives you, it's mostly yeah. big channels. So it's yeah. kind of hard to, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, interesting to see that there's this whole other world of yeah. small subscriber base yeah you know, yeah people, small people, channels they're yeah. kind of like small churches in some ways yeah so i mean I don't, really, I don't know i don't know how many subscribers i want or whatever i mean i don't know what would come of this i don't know if it'll lead you know to other opportunities or you know i don't you know it, as much as i enjoy my current work situation like you know, I'm not opposed to, I don't know, sometimes working as, as much as, you know, I've had bad, you know, a little bit of bad experience and, and what, it wasn't that bad. It's just, you know, the work of the ministry I, is meaningful. And, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, when God puts a call on your life, it's a little hard to ignore that. So, yeah. you know, I, this is kind of like in, in a way my inroad towards uh, maybe doing something that leads to something else i don't know but well, it'll be interesting to see what happens yeah you never know so yeah. you got you got about we got about five more minutes so is there anything you wanted to get to that we haven't talked about i don't know i mean i just feel like i've shared a lot about myself oh which, you have I mean, it was yeah. fun yeah yeah I, it'll be interesting to see what happens to your youtube youtube is such a strange thing um you know and I, about the same time, it's so interesting that I've been doing it for a few years because some channels that started about the same time I did, they just took off and they're, you know, all the way, they're up into six figure sub territory. And, um, and, and sometimes I look at those channels and I'm like, I, I do know why they took off, but it's like, I, I've got no interest in a channel like that. And then there are other channels that they started about the same time I did and they just went nowhere. And then some people started something and they sort of abandoned it and all that, all that stuff is fine. It's just, it's weird, you know, it's not unlike church. It's this weird live experiment in human beings. But then with YouTube, you add on to it, this, this algorithm and this machine. And, you know, th this is, this is freaky stuff we're playing with out here in the world. And it, and it impacts people's lives. Um, so I don't know. I don't know where this whole thing is going, but I'm, you know, I've got my little space in it, I suppose. And that brought yeah. us here. So. Well, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I just, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what will come of it, but I, you know, I, I, it's, a little bit of you know me trying to be obedient to what i feel like god's trying to tell me to do and but then it's exactly yeah. what you should do yeah and and i'm just in and the the sticking with it thing is probably going to be the the biggest challenge uh you know so hopefully i get a, a little bit at least a little bit of uh, positive feedback and that that would be encouraging but um, well i always i always tell people so when i started blogging so i started playing around with the internet probably in around 2000 in a more serious way, websites and blogs and stuff. And in 2007, I sort of settled into WordPress for my leadingchurch.com site, which is just sort of my file cabinet. But very early on, I sort of established a rule for myself, which was do basically do what feels meaningful enough to me so that I'll do it whether or not anybody else ever reads or pays any attention to it. And that's been a good rule because it, you know, what I do on my channel, now, would I still be doing this if I had, I started with 15 subscribers because the Freddie and Paul show, but would I still be doing it if I had two or 3000 subscribers instead of, or two or 300 subscribers, I probably would, you know, sort of like some of the other channels that have grown up around me, like um, the meaning code, that channel burns channel. I mean, burn doesn't have a huge number of subscribers, but you know, burn certainly finds what he's doing with YouTube fulfilling. So I, I, I do think that what I'm doing is, is fairly independent on the followership. The, the amount of followership I have though has been nice because it affords kind of what we're doing right now. And that's, 
I find that I find that a lot of fun because I'm rather nosy, and so I'm very interested in people's lives and and the turns of it, and you know, like the stuff you've shared. So it's it's cool. Well, I appreciate what you're doing, and it's good. You know, and now, pretty much every day there's a good chunk of my morning i know it. i'll be uh have something to listen to so you know i all appreciate right. that all right so. well thank you michael i will send you this video and um you can share it with your wife and uh say okay should we let should we let paul post this or not and, yeah. and then you can let me know okay okay Sounds good all right, all right. thanks thank michael you. take care yeah. bye-bye